the Ortur Obsidian is an entry-level 3D printer that has a handful of bullet points on the box that might entice you at only 300 US dollars, but does it execute these features well? Let's take a look. The Obsidian has a print volume of 250 by 250 on the X and Y and 300 on the Z, which puts it in the same category of machine as the Ender 3, which has an almost $100 lower price tag. It has direct drive extrusion with a Bowden tube only for loading the filament and facilitating the inline filament runout detection. It has a touch screen on the base of the unit and takes a micro SD card on the left side of the unit. It has a capacitive bed sensor for auto leveling and the build plate has a glossy non-removable surface. More on that later. The machine features two ribbon cables for wiring which keeps everything tidy and neat, something we've seen on the popular artillery machines. Those are the basics. Let's go over the things that I like about this machine. The extruder stepper has an extended rear shaft with a knob affixed to it that makes jogging filament into the extruder super easy and means you can purge old filament without digging through the menus. The parts cooling fan is a large blower fan which cools prints very well although it adds a bit of noise to the machine. It also has a dual gear extruder to help grab filament and consistently feed the hot end, which is really helpful for softer filaments like TPU. Now for the things I don't like. After I initially set up the machine, the hot end cooling fan didn't work. I reached out to support and they told me they'd send me the latest firmware. I was pretty surprised at this response as I can't imagine any version of firmware having this integral component disabled. After the new firmware didn't fix my issue, I traced the wire from the connection on the print board up into the ribbon cable where I noticed that a pin had separated from the cable and bent up causing it not to be inserted. I carefully flattened the pin back down and managed to get it inserted. This fixed the issue of the disabled hot end cooling fan. While I had the machine open, I noticed that the wire for the board cooling fan was sheared. This fan keeps the stepper drivers cool during printing. These silent stepper drivers need cooling as they run quite hot, so I was glad I caught this and soldered it back together before reassembling the unit. This video is brought to you in part by Teotronics and their TV soundbar. With three equalizer options for game, movie, and music, as well as the ability to connect via Bluetooth, this budget-friendly soundbar puts your built-in TV speakers to shame. Check out the link in the video description to learn more. Initially, I was getting terrible retractions off this machine, and upon closer inspection, I noticed that the extruder gears didn't engage until the stepper had been moved almost half a turn. I disassembled the extruder and found that the set screw for the hobbed extruder gear wasn't tightened. I snugged up the set screw and it fixed my retraction issues. The machine is running the latest Marlin firmware, but due to the touchscreen interface is lacking some of the advanced menu options you'd normally find, like acceleration and steps per millimeter. To tune my extruder, I needed to connect via USB and send G-code commands to both see what my steps per millimeter were and to set new ones. It's a bit of a hassle, but it only has to be done once or twice. The touchscreen is incredibly unresponsive. It's recessed into the body of the machine in such a way that the smaller back and next page icons are almost impossible to hit with your fingertip. I did the majority of my selecting on this touchscreen using the end of an Allen key, which was really annoying. The filament runout sensor has a large void in it, and you'll need a perfectly straight piece of filament to successfully feed it through. 
Since it's a 3D printed part, I would have liked to see some chamfers on the tail end to guide your filament into the bone tube. As I mentioned before, the bed is non-removable. It holds PLA prints really good when heated and they pop off nicely once cooled, but during my testing the bed took quite a bit of cosmetic damage, even when set to the correct first layer height. Enough with the nitpicking, how does it print? Well, once all the issues are addressed, it prints about as good as an Ender 3 or a CR10. This print really shows off the surface finish I was able to achieve on the machine. This print is a bit of a torture test with a ton of overhangs, bridges, and retractions, but managed to pull it off thanks to that larger print cooling blower. Pretty impressive. Overall, print quality off this machine is good, but it's 2020. You can make almost all printers in this price bracket print great. And with the amount of troubleshooting I had to do on this machine, I simply can't recommend it, especially to beginners. If you're in the market for your first 3D printer, you're better off looking at a Creality machine. There's way more information on troubleshooting those machines because of how popular they are and the community they've amassed. Thanks for watching and if you're interested in more 3D printing videos, consider subscribing.